All right, we are back with part two of going over the one D and D playtest sheet with my son <laughs> Noah and his friend Zane, <laughs> and uh, we're going to continue on. Uh, we're going to be going over um, a bit of the uh, the races that we uh, kind of skipped over yesterday, and then getting through the second half of the. Um, uh, of the playtest sheet here. So, uh, yeah, well, welcome to Orcus Dorcus, um, RPG reviews uh, in the nook, imaginings, the PH is silent. Um, no. So, yeah, yesterday, real quick, uh, just a shout out to Michael from RPG Imaginings. Uh, for whatever reason, it, it just kind of came out as Orcus Dorcus RPG Imaginings. And as much as, um, you know, I really want to steal his, uh, his image, his followers, uh, his intellectual property, uh, his attorneys and my attorneys advised otherwise. So, uh, Michael, if you would be a wonderful guy and drop that case, I would really appreciate it. So, carrying on. Boys, so quick, yes. re quick review. What so far is your kind of general opinion um, of how things are, are changing for the better or the worse so far? I don't like it. You don't like it. Dragonborn getting dark sight was cool. I'm very disappointed with like the Sonic Tieflings. Everything else has just kind of been there. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So we skipped over some of the races yesterday. So what we're going to start off with today is just kind of you know see if we can breeze through uh, the remaining ones. So starting with gnomes, do either of you play gnomes? No. Does any of your friends play gnomes? No. Do you want to go over gnomes? No. Okay. <laughs> is is that a Giano? No. Okay. But no. but we'll we'll skip over the gnomes. What's that? Remember, he needs the mic when he talks. Gnocchi. Yes, gnocchi is good food. But how about we go over halflings, right? Everyone likes a halfling. No. Yes, let's go over them. Okay. okay. All right, so halflings. Cherished and guided by gods who value life, home, and hearth, halflings gravitate towards bucolic havens where family and community help shape their lives. Obits, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that said, many halflings are blessed. Some say maybe cursed with a brave and adventurous spirit that leads them on journeys of discovery, affording them the chance to explore a bigger world and make new friends along the way. Obits. Okay. All right. Their size, being not unlike that of a human child, helps them avoid unwanted entanglements and slip into and out of tight spaces. Uh, apparent, anyone who spends time around halflings, particular halfling adventurers, has likely witnessed the storied luck of halflings. Um, <laughs> is, is the alligator mouthing my words? I cannot comment on this moment. <laughs> anyway, remember, you're on camera. I can see everything you do. Um, uh, <laughs> when a halfling is in mortal danger, it seems as though an unseen force intervenes on the halfling's behalf, making halflings believe in the power of luck, and, their attribute, and they attribute their unusual gift to one or more of their benevolent gods, including Yondala, Brandobaris, and Charmelaine, which not to be confused with the other jam called... Marmalade. Marmalade. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's I thought Garl Glitter Gome was like one of their gods. No, that's gnomes. Gnomes suck. <laughs> Halfling traits. Their creature type is humanoid. They're about two to three feet tall. Speed of 30 feet. So if, 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 if they I... They should be slower because they are this big. Right. Okay, well, I mean, alligator. Well... Let's say that maybe the barbarian in the party were to throw a halfling or a gnome. <laughs> then their speed would be a bit more than whatever Noah thinks it should be. All right. Well, that's that that's that's a fair argument and and I would I would agree with that. So there should be a slash 30 feet walking, 60 feet run, 180 feet thrown. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> yes. All right. So as a half thing, you have these special traits. Oh, and by the way, it's going to be a bit busy in here. You might hear some noise in the background because we have people showing up today. So if, if any of that uh, kind of chimes in, deal with it. I'm not going to be editing this at all. So I apologize. If Derek shows up, do we get to add him to the video? Uh, yes, if Derek shows up, we can add him to the video. Yeah. So yeah, so my, my in-laws are here right now, but uh, just just bear with the, the noise in the background as we go on. So, um, so as a halfling, you have these special traits, right? So you're brave. You have advantage on saving throws to make you avoid or end the frightened condition on yourself. Any issues with that? Okay. All right. 
Now that's new, right? Yeah, Zane? I mean, if they're just like hobbits, won't they just drink away all their fears anyways? Um, maybe. Uh, that. So, I mean, yes. Okay, carrying on. Uh, halfling nimbleness. You can move through the space of any creature that is a size larger than yours, but you can't stop there. Okay, so meaning you can go under their legs and poke them in the butt with your dagger. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, luck. When you roll a one on the d20 of a d20 test, uh, you can, uh, asterisk, um, you can re-roll the die and you must use the new roll. So you can't get a crit fail? Well, remember, critical failures aren't necessarily canon. Well, that's dumb and uh, we'll uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he, he 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 rolled a nat one on his in check. Okay, yeah. So, but doesn't matter either way. You're okay with with halflings being, you know, supernaturally lucky. I mean, yes, yeah. Okay, and they're naturally stealthy. You have proficiency in the stealth skill, automatically. Okay, no. <laughs> why? Okay, tell me why. Because just because you're short doesn't mean you're stealthy. Okay. I've met many short people, and they are not stealthy whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen Bill Murray? No. <laughs> Is Bill Murray Bill Murray Bill Murray Bill Murray short? I, I I've never really seen his actual height. Yeah, it's because he's good at hiding. Oh, okay. Exactly. Okay. Which so he's a half with the lucky feet. He's proficient stealth. So is is obviously now is John Cena halfling then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's, he's a halfling barbarian. He's a halfling with gigantism. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So, yeah, that was a stupid joke. But anyways, moving on. Okay, halflings of many worlds. Once again, we're dealing with, with the fact that I guess they're getting rid of, you know, half this, half that. But you can be something of many worlds along with, you know, um, you know, having parents of different races. But on many worlds, halflings can be different, right? So um, what, what's, what's a world where halflings are different that you know of? Um. Dark Sun. And they're, okay, exactly. They're, they're uh, little, violent little fellies. And, they, and they, they like to eat donuts? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and, of course, there's the, there's the famous um, uh, Dragonlance take of Halflings, um, Kinder, which you may not be, you know, too much about because that's kind of a bit before your time. But Wait, what? Kinder. Kinder and Dragonlance. Um, I'll, I'll fill you in on that later, but they, they, they're coming back in some form or another. Okay. All right. Alligator has something to say. Well, okay, alligator has something to say. Come on. So we want to talk about halflings in different worlds. Okay. Yeah. The ones in Middle Earth. Uh, uh, but that's not a D and D setting. Well, uh, they are the same thing. Hobbits, halflings. Ooh, it's. Uh, Watsy, uh, have your attorneys send your letters to an alligator to to, to alligator at one two two alligator lane, uh, Florida. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yes. No. Halflings and you know halflings tend to generally be the same depending on the setting, but there's there's a few exceptions here. So um, moving on. So orcs. Okay. So orcs. Um, you know, get their own. Looks like they're going to be in the probably presented in the new player's handbook as an immediate choice. Right. Okay. Okay. So, Orcs trace their creation to Grumsh, the one-eyed god, an unstoppable warrior, and powerful leader. Grumsh arms his ch armed his children with certain gifts to help them thrive on the worlds beset by monsters. Even when they turn their devotion to other gods, Orcs retain the gifts that the one-eyed god bestowed upon them. Hmm. Okay. I mean, that seems unlike Grumsh to keep that quality because, you know, he's not, he's not known to be the most jovial of, of gods. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Uh, might, endurance, determination, and the ability to see in the dark, right? So yeah. nothing, nothing really special, nothing changed about orcs, generally speaking. Uh, on average, they're tall and broad. They have gray skin, ears that are small and slightly pointed, and prominent lower canines that resemble small tusks. Young orcs are often told about their ancestors' ancient conflicts with elves and forests, dwarves under the mountains, and invaders from evil planes of existence. Nobody likes dwarves. I mean, <laughs> nobody likes orcs oh. and dwarves. Okay. Wow. Okay. Except we like dwarves. Okay. All right. Alligator? We don't like gnomes. Yeah. Dwarves and orcs are chill, I guess. Okay. But gnomes suck. <laughs> I hate gnomes. Okay. Nobody likes gnomes. All right. Okay. So, in, spi orcs. 
or well. dwarves <laughs> or elves. <laughs> Inspired by those tales, young orcs often wonder when Grumps will call on them to match the heroic deeds of their ancestors and if they will prove worthy of, of the one-eyed one -eyed God's grace. So right there, uh, I mean, generally speaking, it seems like the, um, the background for, for orcs has maybe have changed a little bit to be more in tune with other player characters to make orcs easier to play, I, I would think. Okay. All right. So, but I mean... you. No real issues with that, I would imagine. Um, okay, so orc traits. Creature type. Humanoid. Ooh, no way. <laughs> Medium. Six to seven feet tall. Speed 30 feet, and they live about 80 years. On no, they don't. They, 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 like, die at 30. Uh, really? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm not too too familiar with the actual player character aspect of, of orcs, but but the, the original or the previous uh, lore is they, they essentially they live short, yeah. Hard lives. And, well, well, now they live a little bit longer. So, okay. But, I mean, once again, you, you stated in the other video that lifespan never really plays into your game. So, yeah. okay. But, yeah. So, but, so there's, there's some canon changes here, so to speak. Um, you have these special traits. Adrenaline rush. You can take the dash action as a bonus action. When you do so, you gain a number of temporary hit points equal to your proficiency bonus. Okay, so hardy lives, you know, they... Okay. They, okay. Um, you can use this trait a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So, any... any so, I, I kind of feel like the, these these traits that, that rely on your proficiency bonus, um, what do you feel about that? I mean, to me, it seems like it might be something that could be taken advantage of do you think or could it make yeah. it difficult for a dm yeah yeah so you're just spam it turn after turn after turn if they have like a high proficiency bonus yeah okay and what about alligator i wasn't paying attention i was reading something on your other monitor <laughs> fair enough <laughs> all right and then they have dark vision yeah and you count as one size larger when determining your carrying capacity and the weight you can push drag or lift huh why don't any other big guys get that? Why don't Dragonborn get that? Uh, uh, good question. Very good question. Orcs aren't just like Hulk. Right. And and what, what if your orc happens to not have, you know, a good amount of strength, depending if you're playing, you know, something of a different type of orc. But regardless, bad. regardless of your strength, you automatically get to carry something as one size larger. I mean... Yeah. I mean, it still stands in the previous video that the weakest orc is still stronger than the strongest halfling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Don't you know anything about that? All right, so... Uh, oh, and one more thing. You get restless endurance, or relentless endurance. When you are reduced to zero hit points and not killed outright, you can drop to one hit point instead. Once you use this trait, you can no longer do it until you finish a long rest. So you can just choose to not die? You can just choose to not go to zero hit points. So I mean, if someone drops, so someone could do like triple your maximum HP. You could just use this and stay alive. Uh, apparently so. Okay, okay, never mind. It's just not killed outright. Never mind. Yeah, no. You, you, if if you're killed outright. So if someone drops you to, to zero hit points, and you know they don't stab you while you're down, or you don't take a mass amount of, of damage, you can just you know just. Bling, you know, drink, drink a potion of endurance, so to speak, and um, you 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 prop back up with one hit point, ready to save the day. So, I mean, it, it doesn't sound bad. That sounds busted when you mix it with zealot barbarian. Okay, well, I mean, that's the thing to consider. Yeah, it does sound pretty busted. Does does that's the thing to consider? A lot of a lot of the these changes to the the race, the traits, and everything you get when stacked with when you decide your class is something that could break a lot of things, could make you extremely more overpowered, especially in the beginning, because it's it's already tough as it is, right, when you get into into higher classes, you know, providing scenarios that, you know, your your player characters just can't, you know, bulldoze over, correct? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So, so it seems like... Now, we're going to get to something that may also upset you in regards to this. So we already noticed that that a lot of these, a lot of these uh, characters, they're going to be even more powerful than they already can be at first level in 5e, right? So, you know, orcs of many worlds, blah, blah, blah. They're different everywhere. Okay. Tieflings. Uh, tieflings are either born in the lower planes or have... I already went over 
Oh, we did. Never mind. Yeah. Thank you. And then so here we go. Okay. Um, here we go. So moving on. So part two. We're getting now to to the these. We're done with the races. So you've gone through the races. You kind of have a general idea of what it is that they're going to be provided uh, just from the start, you know. And you guys have opinions on them. Some of them you don't mind. Some of them you feel like it's a bit overpowered from from even before they've decided their class. So, all right. So your character's background is a collection of characteristics that represent the place and occupation that were the most formative for the character when they embarked on a life of adventure. When you choose a background, you have three options, okay? Build a background by using the rules in the Build Your Background section. Select a pre-made background or select a pre-made background from the Sample Background section and then customize it with the rules in the Build Your Own Background section. So, I mean, that, that kind of seems a bit... Isn't that just Tasha's custom lineage? Uh, could be. Yeah. I mean, you, there's there's going to be a lot of that. So it seem, seems like Tasha was kind of paving the way <laughs> for some of these changes. Uh, and, you know, some may, may follow through, some may not. But here we go. Okay, so. No matter what background you choose, consider these questions from your character's viewpoint. How does your background influence your current worldview? Oh, what happened? Who? Oh, Derek's here. Okay. Derek might be. Yeah, we'll just we'll just take a, a moment here. I'll, we'll we'll discuss things with with the um, alligator. So they they have another friend here that's going to pop in. Uh, Derek, they're going to be playing uh, Mork Borg today. Now Derek is relatively new uh, to uh, the tabletop role He's playing been playing game. Playing it since January. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, but his you know he may not have as much opinions as you guys have as he's you know kind of still still learning, but his opinions are equally valid. So, all right. Derek, wait, hold on, wait. Derek. Get over here. Derek, just get over here, Derek. Come on, Derek. We're waiting. You're holding it up. All right. Derek, you can just kind of get in, in the background Hello. there. All right. So maybe take a knee or there we go. All right. So everyone, this this is Derek. And uh, Derek, feel feel free feel free to chime in when when if you have an opinion on anything, okay? Oh, and remember, if Derek's talking, you got to put the mic in his oh. face, too. Hi. Okay, so no. Hello. Take, no, take the mic back. Uh. Okay, so don't don't block Dork. Uh, Devin? Uh, uh, Dork? Yeah. Okay, all right. Stop, Reginald. Stop trying to hide, Derek, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to move. All right. All right, don't so car move. carrying That's on. The carrying on. Okay, so you have uh, these questions to consider. How does your background influence your current wor worldview? Um, do you embrace or reject your background? And do you form relationships during your background that endure today? So, do you answer? Uh, do you have any answers for these questions? Uh, I mean, you you stated that you felt that backgrounds really played no influence in your character yeah. from the moment you picked it. It was just kind of like I used to be, you know, a, a cotton candy vendor. Yeah. And then then you get plus one to cotton candy. I mean, the backgrounds had the slight influence of giving you the skills proficiencies that would tie into your backstory. Mm -hmm. So it mattered a little bit at level one, but like after that, it didn't really. Okay. Right. So, but I guess they're putting a little bit more oomph in it. So, so building your background, um, use the rules here to, you can build a background from scratch or customize a pre-made background. Um, when you build a background, your character gains the features and background features section below. As you make your choices for those features, think about your character's past, what they just said, yada, yada, yada. If you, if you decide to customize a pre-made background, you can choose any features in that background and, and replace them with the features below of the same name. For example, if you want to change a background's language feature, you, you can replace that feature with the language feature below. Okay, so background features. Ability scores. When you determine your character's ability scores, choose two of them and increase one by two and the other by one. Okay. So your background now determines if you have ability score bonuses. That's pretty uh, uh, uh that's pretty uh, dumb dumb. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. And then how about the how about the other guys? Yeah. No, that's kind of stupid. Okay. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So skill proficiencies. Choose two skills. Your character gains proficiency in them. Okay. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, I would hate for you to choose two and only be proficient in one of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, tool proficiency. Choose one tool. No. I mean... I have never used a tool roll check thing. There's there's one right there. Ouch. 
I've utilized tool checks. It's called, you know, thieves tools or artificer tools when you're doing stuff that isn't just a fighter or a warlock or a sorcerer or any of the other stupid things you play. Okay. Uh, I don't really care about tools. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Um, language. Choose one language from the standard languages and rare language tables that appear in your document. Your character knows that language. So, so you guys are off the bat immediately multilinguistic in so many different things. I speak common, elvish, dwarven, halfling, thrykreen, aboleth, deep speech. Kinda? <laughs> All right, so... Uh, I speak wrong. Then you also get to choose one first level feat. Hopefully this will be figured out because you guys have questions about that. And then your character gains 50 gold, gold pieces to spend on starting equipment. The character keeps any unspent gold pieces as spare coin. Okay. All right? Uh, That's okay. a lot of money. Okay, so and we have a little, little sidebar here. Ability score increases from elsewhere. Since 2014, characters have received ability score increases from several sources, either from a race that has ability, in sc ability score increased trait or from the ability score rules in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, Monsters of the Multiverse, and other books. I seem to recall there were some other books previous to that, but th apparently they don't exist. Uh, if you make a character using one of those old sources and get ability score increases from it, the character doesn't also get ability score increases from background, unless you forgo the old ability score increases to gain increases from the background rules here. So, so essentially they're giving you permission to, to use the old ways if you want, but they, they're, they're recommending you, you don't use both because obviously Superman or woman. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Plus five strength. Yeah. Okay. Plus so, five strength, heavy armor master. Okay. Let's go. So, so we're going to, we're not going to go through all of the sample backgrounds, but maybe we'll, is there one particular one that you would like to, for me to read? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> Sane. <laughs> Nah. Okay, so I'll just I'll just read the first one. So Acolyte. Acolyte gives you a plus two to wisdom and a plus one to intelligence. Uh, skill proficiencies are insight and religion, tool proficiency, uh, uh, calligraphers supplies, and language celestial. Your feat is magic initiate, divine. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Excuse me. And then your equipment, you get a book of prayers, calligrapher supplies, holy symbol, parchment, robe, and three gold pieces. So it sounds like you're, you're a pre-cleric. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll just kind of scroll through these. You know, blah, 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 blah. And then, blah, blah, you know, blah, as, blah, as blah, stated, blah, 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 blah. stop. Um, okay. So starting languages. I think we'll, okay. So we, we sign language. Sign language? Yeah. Yeah, starting huh. languages. I mean, yeah, you you could play uh, you know, a you know, a a deaf person or you know, someone who might be mute. That could be fun to role play. Why would you be deaf if the spell greater restoration exists? Uh oh, Derek said something. All right, I don't know. Maybe it could be an uncurable thing in some cases. Greater restoration cures everything though. Does it res does it re re restorate curses? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Will it fix whatever the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Probably. No, it won't. All right. So that's, that is a good question. But of course, this, you know, the whole thing for that is regardless of what exists in your world, it, it's going to add some flavor to it if your players or DM, you know, prefers to have that. So um, once again, apologize for the dog in the background. It's my in-laws little shit dog and she's a little shit. A demon from hell. Exactly. Um, all right, so here we go. We're going to get into feats now. Okay, here are descriptions of feats mentioned in the, in the document's background. The feats are presented in alphabetical order. So we have alert, which is considered a first-level feat. Always on the lookout for danger, you gain... Heavy armor master. All right, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> Always on the lookout for danger, you gain the following benefits. When you roll initiative, you can add your proficiency bonus to the roll. Okay. Initiative swap. Immediately after you roll initiative, you can swap your initiative with the initiative one willing ally in the same combat. You can't Why? Make, you can't make the swap if you or the ally is com incapacitated. I mean, well, it's you're, you're ultra alert. Uh, I mean, so I guess that falls into the fact that you know, if, if Zane's character notices danger and you don't, you could use his, you know, what what is he looking at? And that will give, he can choose to swap with you. There are other games that do stuff like this, so this is not new, but it's something that might be a little bit different for 
uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Once again, it seems they're they're making you making things a little bit easier. Or is I mean, is that how you feel, or what's your take on it? I'm okay. Okay, you're okay. All right. All right. So, what's so what is saying? What, what do you want me to look up? Heavy armor master. Heavy, heavy armor master. Uh, heavy armor master is not in this list of. Bad game. <laughs> Doesn't have fire cows or fire elves or heavy armor master. Zero out of ten. No, but th these are first level feats, and these are feats that come with your background. Too bad. All right. <laughs> so. Cry. So, well, let's see here. Is there anything in here? Tavern brawler, uh, skilled savage attacker, magic initiate. All those I we know already. Lucky. Heavy armor master or shield master. All right. Well, it's not in the play test. Bad. I'm bad. I'm sorry. Um, so then you have arcane spells and arcane spell draws on the ambient magic of the multiverse bard sorcerers warlocks and wizards harness the magic as do artificers for a partial list of arcane spells see spell list um, artisan tools we all know what tools are uh, creature type what's a tool uh, I you would, you you <laughs> Uh, creature type. For every creature in D&D, including every player character, has a special tag in the rules that, ad that identifies the type of creature they are. Most players are humanoids. Here's a list of the game's creature types in alphabetical order. So let's see if there's anything that's changed. I'm going to be an ooze. So aberration. Aberration. Beast. Celestial. Construct. Dragon. Element. Elemental, I mean. Fey. Fiend. Giant. Humanoid. Monstrosity. Ooze. Plant. Undead. These types don't have rules. Like, Go ahead. Sorry. You see... Give it like another year, and it's only going to be one left. It's going to be Fey. Fey. Everything's going to be Fey. Goblin. Fey. Yeah. Demlin. Dealman. Dealman. Tricreen. Fey. Dealmans and and the levels. Dealmans and glebels. And glebels. Okay. Uh, the type. God, the the alligator smells. Um, you smell. <laughs> The, these types don't have rules themselves, but some rules in the game affect creatures certain types in different ways. For example, the, des the, the description of Cure Wounds specifies that the spell doesn't benefit a construct. Dumb, 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 stupid, dumb. Right. Okay. So, I mean, why? Uh, because a uh, mending spell. Okay. So, here is Shut up. a rule uh, called the D20 test. The term D20 test encompasses the three main D20 rolls, ability checks, attack rolls, and saving throws. If something in the game affects D20 tests, it affects all three of these roles. The DM determines whether a D20 test is warranted uh, in, in any given circumstance. To be warranted, a D20 test must have a target number no less than 5 and no greater than 30. Rolling a 1 on a D20, the D20 test automatically fails regardless of any modifiers on the roll. All right. So, so I'll make people have to make a DC 40 check. Okay. So, so you already know, th this is rules for people who are essentially just kind of getting into the game, um, who may be utilizing this play test for, for the first time. So, yeah. All right. I'm okay. sorry. Did the alligator have a comment? No. No? Okay. He's all tuckered out. And, uh, Derek, you okay? The radiant damage got to the alligator. Okay. Gotta, gotta okay. Well, here we go. Critical hits. Okay. It's weapons and unarmed strikes have a special feature for player characters called critical hits. If a player character rolls a 20 for an attack roll with a weapon or unarmed strike, the attack is also a critical hit, which means it deals extra damage to the target. You roll the damage, the damage dice of the weapon or unarmed strike a second time and add the second roll as extra damage. Um, if your weapon or unarmed strike has no damage dice, it deals no extra damage on a critical hit. Okay. Uh, divine spells, uh, gaming set, uh, grappled. Um, when you are grappled, you experience the following effects. Your speed is zero and can't change. You have disadvantage on attack rolls against any target other than the grappler. So that doesn't sound like that changes at all. Okay. Oh, the, gr the grappler can drag or carry you, but the grappler suffers a slow condition while moving unless you are tiny or two or more sizes smaller than the grappler. And escape. While grappled, you can make a dexterity or strength saving throw against the grapple's escape. Difficulty um, at the end of, the, of each of your turns. In the condition on... In the condition on yourself on a success. Ending the condition on yourself on a success. The condition also ends if the grappler is incapacitated or something moves you outside the grappler's range without using your speed. Um, okay, so we have the different conditions here. Inspiration. When you have inspiration, you can expend it to give yourself advantage on a d20 test. Gaining inspiration. Um, be a human. Yeah. Long be, rest. Yeah. Ex Done. Exactly. You, you, you are just inspiring the way you are. 
<laughs> I'm an alligator. Yeah, well, you don't get it then. You don't get it. Uh, Racism. Um, only one at a time. You can never have more than one instance of inspiration. So there you go. Okay, you, good. Okay. If something gives you inspiration, you already have it. You can give inspiration to a player in your group who lacks it. So even as a human, you can still gain you it. Get you get inspiration. You get inspiration. You get inspiration. <laughs> um, if you still have inspiration when you start a long rest, you lose that inspiration. Okay. Okay, good. It's not exploitable. Right. Okay, long rest is a period of extended downtime, eight hours, during which a creature sleeps for at least six to perform no more than two hours of light, light activity. The benefits are at the end of a long rest, a creature regains all lost hit points, also spent hit, can regain spent hit dice, up to half the creature's total number of them. A creature can't benefit from more than one long rest in a 24-hour period, and a creature must have at least one hit point at the start of the rest to gain its benefits. Um, if a long rest is interrupted by combat or by one hour of waking, casting spells, or similar activity... The rest confers no benefit and must be restarted. However, the rest... So is about that uh, yeah. no long rest or only one long rest per 24 hours thing. Yep. I don't know if that's, you know, true to life. No, is that true to life? Yeah. No, it's not, Noah. <laughs> yeah, how many long no, rests... it is not. How many long rests do you take? At least five. Yeah, okay. Day. Okay. What's five times eight? Five times eight. <laughs> it's five times <laughs> eight. <laughs> yeah. I, I sleep for 40 hours a day every day. Excellent. We, we, we are on a different planet. Um, okay, musical instrument, blah, blah, blah. Uh, primal spells. A primal spell draws on the forces of nature, inner planes, druids and rangers, harnesses magic for partial lists. Read here. Slowed condition. Tremor sense. You may read what tremor sense is? No, I already know what it is. Well, let's see if it's changed. A creature with, a creature with tremor sense can pinpoint the location of creatures and moving obje objects within a specific range, provided, provided that the creature with tremor sense and anything it, it's detecting are both in contact with the same surface such as ground wall or ceiling. Tremor sense can't detect creatures or objects in the air, and tremor sense doesn't count as a form of sight. Okay. Uh, unarmed strike. Spell lists. Um, so they give you... It's just first level spell lists. And, okay. and there you go. Fair enough. Okay. It's not as bad as right. I thought it was going to be, but I still don't like it. Now, there's one thing I want to toss your way, which I, I, I don't know why it's not in here. What what's Derek? Revised, like, d like a like revised D and D thing that they're probably gonna release. Um, yeah yeah this is this is a play test for a, the, a new set of D and D rules that'll probably be coming out in a couple years. So they it just came out the other day and people are are losing their their ever loving minds over it, Derek. So we're just kind of we're doing a little video to to get the you we're know, being an angry mob. We're going, we have our pitchforks and torches ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and now now no Derek I gotta ask you, are you with them? Or against them? I don't know. I'm, I'm new to D&D. &D. Okay, well, but you, you have to make the decision now. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be sacrificed. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't have a choice, Derek. <laughs> um, so one thing that I didn't see in here that I just want to get, get you guys' opinions on, and I, I don't know why it's not, but but there's there's been talk of one of the other major changes is only player characters can crit. Monsters or your adversaries cannot. No. Yeah. No. Well, yeah, that's that's something. That's kind of stupid because then that skews the game's balance m way more towards the player. Okay. When it's supposed to be a game between the player and the DM, you can't just have the player be able to do something the DM can. That's kind of not... Kind of BS. Right. Okay. All right. So, kind of in closing, wrapping it all together... Um, you know, and, and you know, give me a little bit of here, not just go. Um, it, generally speaking, you you kind of said no. Okay, it's not as bad as you thought, but there's some things in here you don't like, right? Yeah. Um, but would this be something that you know, as it starts to come out more, would you guys just completely say no? Would you pull pieces from it to use, or would you would you think you would end up using it? I would play it once. Mm -hmm. There would be some things from it I take. Dragonborn Dark Vision. Okay. And I don't know, just if something grabs my attention from it, I might take it, but right. not like everything, because I'm not a. Not everything in here is my favorite change to D&D. Okay. Noah? I don't really take the Dragonborn Dark Vision. That's it? Yeah. Out of everything. Yeah, so, only, so, dark, only Dragonborn Dark Vision. So redact everything on this page and then print it out and give it to you. Yeah. Okay. And Derek, how about you? Uh, I would just use the rules the DM gave. 
fair enough. Good, good answer. Good answer. Um, be, be sure and give Derek an, an extra uh, Mountain Dew. Star. No. Thank you. We'll <laughs> give you an extra Omen Morkborg. <laughs> right. So the boys are uh, going to be playing Morkborg later today. So, anyways, uh, in in con- in conclusion, this is just kind of the you know the a quick page so, through. So is this the outro? Yeah, so to speak. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. So. Yeah. So. So here we go. Um, so yeah. So this. Oh god, the alligator is attacking. No, hold on. Wait, person. I'm still. You, you want to be in the videos? Oh, yeah. The alligator. Um, okay. So before the chaos ensues, uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys taking the time. I do appreciate the boys here giving their opinions. Sit. We're not done yet. Uh, but uh, what I'd like to know is, is this has been a lot of fun. There's been a lot of interesting feedback. Having my son and, and Zane and, and you know other friends here. If you would like to see more things with them in it, uh, you know, drop a comment, let me know, and, or if there's anything that you would like their take on, maybe they can come back, you know, in the near future and you know g- give their opinion on other things. As stated, they're playing Mork Bork today, um, and obviously Noah here is a giant fan of, of Mork Bork and, and other games. These their their gaming. Uh, the games that they play are pretty diverse. They don't just focus on 5e alone like other people do, but they do enjoy, you know, 5e and it's, well, it's current iteration. But, uh, so there you are. Thank you for, for, uh, tuning in to Orcus Dorcas's RPG. Imaginations. Imagine, uh, wait, no, hold on. Don't, don't mess me up again. Uh, sh- shena- sh- shenanigans. Shenanigans. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Um, and uh, we look forward to uh, you know uh, other things coming out. There'll be more fr- um, uh, unprofessional unboxings coming up, more a pull from the shelf, and maybe we'll get these boys in and, and maybe some other their friends no, here another no, time. I think there'll even be more board. <laughs> and I think <laughs> I think we'll end it there. Take care, everyone. Ah!